I'm going to tell you now about intensity of sound, which is the physics version of loudness. So let us bring back first the picture that you already know very well, the picture of wave on a simple wave on a string. Okay. In this case, what's happening is that I have a source which is undergoing simple harmonic motion. Okay. And it's transmitting power to each particle in the string. So look at this, you know, the last particle would have got power from the previous particle, the one from that from the one before it. So each particle is just transmitting power to the next particle. So no power is lost in an ideal wave on a string and power is sort of enough for us to understand the whole picture. Okay. But now let's talk about sound. Sound is a 3D wave. Yeah. But we will consider a 3D wave. Yeah. A 3D wave, a 3D wave of sound, but a simple case, a simple case when it's traveling only in one direction. Okay. So what we have over here is a piston cylinder arrangement. Okay. So this is a cylinder containing gas. So this is a, this is the front view where you can see the length of it. And if I saw from the side, I would see a area of area A. Okay. So what I mean by this is there is, you know, some, let me rub this off. Yeah. So there is some air inside the cylinder. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it into few layers. Okay. And the source over here is the piston, which is moving in simple harmonic motion. Okay. So what we'll get over here is planar wave fronts. You've learned about wave fronts in the simple case like this, I'll be getting a planar wave fronts. So how can I imagine this? Suppose I am standing over here. Okay. And I'm innocently holding a sheet of whatever, say aluminum. And there is some huge speaker somewhere in the room, you know, huge sheet, which is vibrating. Okay. So when it's vibrating, it's producing planar wave fronts of which a part I'm going to consider. Okay. Because this is the region of the room in which I'm standing, say a corridor or something. Okay. So I'm getting planar wave fronts like this. And what are wave fronts? I hope you remember they are just, you know, a collection of the particles having the same phase moving together. Okay. So energy over here, unlike the case that we talked earlier about, unlike the case of wave on a string where each particle gave it to the next particle, here the energy is going to get distributed over here. And you know, I'm very innocent because I am holding a sheet and I'm expecting all of this energy to get collected over here. That's not going to happen. You know, that's not going to happen because the energy that I'm going to get is only equivalent to the, you know, area of the sheet I am holding. Are you understanding this? You know, that tells me that we need a new physical quantity. Okay. And that's why we invent physical quantities when we find a new reason for it. Okay. So this is what is defined as intensity. So intensity is equal to the power, the power, basically the power I'll be getting if this were one meter square, if this were one meter square, I will be getting the power equal to intensity. That's how it's defined. So it's not one meter square. If it's a meter square, then the power is divided by the area. A is the area is what we call as intensity. I hope you got this. Okay. So we need intensity only in 3d waves. So let's bring back this picture of piston and cylinder. Okay. This is going to help us understand this problem even better. Okay. So let me consider you know, this area, the area between this region, say this is a compression, this is a rarefaction, this is another compression. So this suppose has a length X and I am freezing time here. Okay. So waves have just, you know, the compression rarefaction have just reached this point. They have not gone any further. This is the time I'm going to consider. Okay. So this X length has a volume of X into A right? Because X is the length and A is the area of this. So how much mass will be there in this? Yes. The density into X A will be the total mass of X. Why am I talking about the mass of this? You will understand because I want the energy contained in this X region. Okay. So if I take, you know, if I consider a very thin layer of air and that's what we call particles in sound. 
okay this is what we call a particle in sound okay a thin layer of fluid and let me call that say a, a layer with a mass of mp okay if i consider this layer i know that i'm using a point i'm going to use a point to represent it this is just undergoing simple harmonic motion okay if this is undergoing simple harmonic motion i know that the total energy is going to be constant always equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy and this kinetic energy and potential energy will always be changing where the total is going to remain the same okay so let's take a convenient point the midpoint that is when the displacement is zero for this layer which we call a particle is the the energy is just going to be equal to kinetic energy okay because there is no displacement the potential energy will become zero and the total energy is equal to ke max okay and just like i told you in the last video the displacement amplitude of a sound wave is given by s not okay and the maximum particle speed vp max is given by s not omega where omega is the angular frequency yeah this we got because the displacement was equal to s not sin omega t minus kx so the speed of the particle came out to be s not omega cos omega t minus kx making this the maximum vp max okay so the energy of this particle always okay is going to be half mass of the particle into s not square omega square okay so now in this whole region x there are infinite such you know thin 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 layers of air which we are calling particles and each layer will be having this much energy okay so what is the total energy of the x region summation of the energy of each particle so this is nothing but the total energy of the x region is equal to half into mass of the x region into s not square omega square so the total energy of the x region is nothing but half into rho into x into a s not square omega square so it's simple okay so this is the energy contained in this x region of the wave so now let me consider how to find the average power okay average power is the energy that this this piston this oscillator is giving to the wave in one second so i'll allow it for one second to oscillate if it oscillates for one second imagine how much new region will i get where the wave penetrates it's going to be v into 1 where v is what wave speed okay because speed into time is the distance so v into 1 second will be the length of the region where the wave penetrates in 1 second okay so how much energy will this v length be carrying okay for that we have to do nothing but substitute instead of x i have to substitute v so energy this you know x in 1 second is carrying is equal to half rho v a s not square omega square pretty simple right and what is the energy that is going to be produced in 1 second called yeah average power so in 1 second the energy that this wave gets is called nothing but average power in other words coming back to a previous picture of wave fronts me standing over here holding a sheet okay this this p average tells how much power is distributed in this whole wave front and what is the area of the wave front area of wave front is area of the cylinder so the area is a yeah average intensity in this case is equal to nothing but p average divided by the area so what do i have to do to get intensity i have to divide this by area divide this by area and do the favorite thing that we have to do cancel out this a okay so intensity is now the intensity the intensity that is the power i'll be getting if this were 1 meter square is equal to half density of the medium speed of the wave into s not square omega square and that's is the story of intensity